Hey guys, what's up? It's Bunkle Zunky. So I'm finally, finally doing my solo Dagonoth Kings guide. So first of all, before we actually get started into the killing of the kings, I have to go over the gear setup that you're going to want to bring. So at the moment, I actually have a Dagonoth task, which is very, very handy. Um, so if you do have one, you definitely want to be wearing a Slayer Helm. And after that, I just got to quickly give a disclaimer. Um, you can duo DK DKs using the exact same setup that I'm showing you in this guide, but if you want to solo, you're going to have to have Dragors. I'm sorry, you just, it's really, really hard to solo. Um, you have to be going full speed the entire time, even with Dragors, and without them, you just use up too much food and you can't last very long at all. So if you're willing to solo without Dragors, just be aware that you're only going to get like 30 kills a trip because you're not going to be able to kill them fast enough and you will run out of food. But regardless, let's start going over the gear and the stats. This is, of course, a higher level PVM requirement, so you're going to have to have pretty high stats and overloads and stuff like that. If you don't have all this stuff, feel free to duo or trio them with some friends. You can use the exact same gear I have, except, for example, um, instead of wearing Drago Rapiers, you can wear, like, Chaotic Rapiers, um, and you can duo just fine with a friend in Loot Share or whatever um, using these this exact same gear and setup. And you don't obviously have to have a pack yak either. You can also bring a war tortoise filled with food and prayer and etc. But what you want to be wearing is your melee ranger mage gear. It doesn't really matter what you start out with, but just decent armor. Bandos works fine. If you don't have that, you can wear Barrow's armor. And then make sure you bring bolts. I always forget them. And I'm wearing Fremenic Sea Boots because they are extremely, extremely useful. They note all the bones that you drop. But if you don't have them, then you can just wear... Um, Glacor boots or really your best defensive boots and then a skill cape is really handy because it gives pretty good armor and stuff Of course, I don't have my max cape back yet um, So helm if you're on task if not just wear a any decent helm with a good armor rating um, Amulet of fury or glory if you don't have that clone mancer gloves 10 bears gloves. They're pretty useful uh, Penance aura is great here as well as vampirism So if you have those two bring them both along and a ring, six stage circuit is good, or one of the DK's rings uh, can also work quite well, or a ring of wealth if you um, want to have a slightly higher chance of getting drops. And in your inventory, just bring some overloads, some prayer renewals, a few prayer potions. I have more prayer in my yak because you're going to need more than this. Um, a few food for when you first get down there because the only time you really take a whole lot of damage is when you first enter the room, and after that it is smooth sailing as long as you know what you're doing. Um, some extra yak pouches so your yak doesn't die. Uh, some runes, don't forget those. Um, I'm using chaotic staff. You can also use a staff of light that works just fine. Um, or a and a royal crossbow if you don't have that. A crystal bow is the next best thing. Um, just be aware if you don't have uh, all these gear requirements. Start out with uh, duoing, see how it goes. If you're doing really well, you can try soloing. You just make sure you're on a very very low population world. Um, even if you have high gear. And then just bring a top and bottom switch for mage and range. It doesn't really matter that much. Just it's more for the accuracy than the defense because you can soul split all your health back. And in the inventory, you're going to need some food. Um, you will need this no matter what your levels are um, because there are just instances where you're going to get hit a bit and you're going to need food. And some more prayer, some more overloads and renewals. So anyway, I'm going to be showing you guys how to open the doors in Waterbirth Island now because that is a complicated process and it does require two people so you're going to need a friend so if you're in a clan just ask someone for help or ask someone on your friends list and you can't get in only with yourself unfortunately you will need a friend to get in there which is the worst part about DKs by far so before we get actually into the killing of the kings I just have to show you guys exactly how to get there so I had a friend actually come do a duo trip with me I actually had a couple people come earlier uh, on my first solo trip and I was gonna show them in the video and they're kind of excited about that but the video file messed up so I'm sorry about that I feel kinda of bad but anyway uh, I went again for a duo trip to finish my slayer task and so you just run to either the north, far north or far southern gate each of you stand on a pressure plat pad and then you open up the gate and then you go Go to the north gate and you re rinse and repeat the process don't ever bother with the middle gate there's absolutely no reason to ever open it and then one person runs back and one person goes through the second gate that's opened and after that you run down to the end of a very long tunnel that's going to be filled with monsters mostly including dagonoths and some uh, vicious rock crabs as well and then there's a couple um 
there's an additional thing that also requires two people to open. I don't know why it still has to be this way. It's really, really annoying. It would be so much simpler if you could just get in there without the help of another person, but you have to destroy some door support, so you do need range for this, but if you are going to Dagonoth Kings, you're going to have a uh, royal crossbow or some other kind of bow anyway, so that's not a big deal. And then you just run through a long winding path. Um, I did not show this just because it would take a lot of time to record, and it's just a straightforward path. So yeah, you just run through a long path and you finally get to this room with all the rock lobsters and once you're ready, uh, you charge and go into the Dagonoth King area. So just be warned, when you first go in there, you're going to be taking a lot of damage because you'll have all three kings on you at once. This is the hardest part of the entire fight unless you really, really screw up. But um, unless anything super terrible happens, this is going to be by far the worst part of the killing of the Dagonoth Kings. So you're going to be taking a lot of damage um, because all three kings will be on you at once. This won't be the case later because um, they take a while to spawn and they'll spawn individually and you can only deal with one at a time, which is really easy. But um, during this part, the only thing that you can really do is just kind of eat a lot of food. Uh, you'll probably go through at least six sharks or something like that. But just try to get um, Supreme down. He is the one that uses range. He has kind of uh, black fins on his body, so he's pretty easy to recognize. He's also the ones that one that uses range attacks. And yeah, you just want to melee him down as fast as possible with your Drygors. And as soon as he's dead, you want to whip out your mage gear and you want to kill Dagonoth Rex with magic. Um, always remember that Supreme is weak to range. He's the one with black spikes on his head. Uh, Rex is weak to magic, he's the bald one, and uh, Prime is weak to range, he's the one that stands at a distance and shoots water at you, and he's also pretty deadly, but anyway, uh, yeah, you kill Rex next with your mage, and finally you turn around and kill uh, Prime with your range gear, and then you just want to keep on going with that process, you just kill Supreme with melee, and then when Rex spawns, you kill Rex, and when Supreme spawns, you kill Supreme. So as you can see, I do have the pack yak in this video, and um, I would recommend if you're solo in that you have a pack yak, mostly just because if you do have a pack yak, then you probably have really high uh, stats as well, which you're going to need to solo. Um, so I would recommend to bank all the hides. Um, if you have Fermentic Boots 4, as I mentioned earlier in the setup part of this video, um, because the Fermentic Boots 4 will bank all of, or note all of your bones, so you can just keep them all in your inventory. Um, and then you can just bank the hides with your pack yak. However, if you don't have Fermentic Boots 4, you definitely want to be banking the bones because they're worth more gold, so they're better to bank than the hides. The hides, I think, are worth about 3,000 each, and the uh, bones are worth about 7.5k each, so it does add up to a lot. You can make like 500k an hour from the bones and hides alone. But anyway, I'm just going to show you a couple cycles here. Each cycle is when you kill one of each king, so uh, three kills is in a cycle. Um, you get about 90 kills an hour going full speed. Uh, I believe my first hour here I got 87 kills, so pretty close to 90. Um, you got to remember that I haven't soloed much Dagonoth Kings. I've done tons and tons and tons of duo, but um, since the evolution of combat, I haven't done a ton of soloing. Of course, before the evolution of combat, all I did was solo Dagonoth Kings, pretty much. But um, Yes, so I'm still getting the hang of this myself. I gotta admit, uh, I did a couple practice runs and actually a couple failed recordings. Um, you just gotta keep one thing in mind, and that's you always want to use the lowest uh, world population that you can. Uh, the world that I was on only had a hundred people on it, and that keeps those spawn rates slow because if the spawn rates are too fast, you're gonna die. It's as simple as that. So, um, also just when you're maging, make sure to use the sunshine ability, and if you have a full adrenaline bar when you're you're on uh, Supreme, use Berserk so you can kill him really fast. And don't ever, ever, ever use ultimates on Prime. Those are the range ultimates. Never use them because the mage and melee ultimates are just much better. So you always want to be using them. And anyway, the best drop to get here is obviously the Dragon Hatchet, which is about 4 mil. So that's pretty nice to get one of them. Um, some of the rings can be nice as well. They're not as good. You'll see my first drop of the trip here, which is a Berserker ring. And I have one more drop that's coming up at the end of the video. But yeah, look out for those hatchets and get a ton of Slayer XP if this is your task. Otherwise, just have fun and make some money. So yeah, I did get one other kill or one other drop. I got both the drops really, really early on in the trip. And then the rest of the trip, I didn't get anything. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. So yeah, my second drop here was a Sears ring. 
it's not worth for much it's like 500k so don't be jealous but anyway thanks for watching this video guys hopefully it helped please subscribe and farewell